like I'm entering a new phase of painting because on Tuesday I successfully painted an entire painting in one day. Sometimes I told myself that I would go back and finish things later, but I'm not going to do that and I want to train myself to be less of a perfectionist and be okay with things just being done. I've noticed that when I see other artists work, I like things that aren't perfect, but yet with my own work, I want it to be perfect. So I think there's a little streak of OCD that I need to overcome. This is what I painted. it so you can see the detail. I wanted to do things differently like for example I wanted to go back in later and make the berries like different colors some darker some lighter and I wanted to make the snow more blue instead of how warm and yellow it is and my sister said that she liked it it looks like it has an Instagram filter on it and I thought well that's not a bad thing Instagram filters are cool in fact one time I tried to paint something that had an Instagram filter on it trying to replicate that look and it didn't look good. So I like how this looks overall and if it looks Instagram-y, that's a bonus. I think this is one of those examples where if I were to work it too much and add more detail, I would regret it and I would see pictures of it at this stage and wish I had left it here because the simplicity is more indicative of something I would put on my own wall. It might currently be my favorite painting. The image that I used as a reference is one that I saw on Instagram and I asked the person who took it if I could have permission to paint it for my very small gallery. She's also an artist and I was excited that she said I could. I'm linking to her in the notes below. Let's get to the painting part. To start, I'm using Winsor Newton's Titanium White, Cobalt Blue Hue, and Alizarin Crimson. I'm also using Grumbacher's Cadmium Red, Burnt Umber, Yellow Ochre, and though it's not in the picture, Burnt Sienna. When I'm mixing, I want the reds on my palette for the berries. I think a mixture of the two colors will work best, the Alizarin Crimson and the Cadmium Red. Also, the snow in the background is darker than the snow in the foreground, so I'm mixing some snow colors as well. White with burnt umber is creating a brownish gray, and white with alizarin crum crimson, too much alizarin crimson, makes a pink, and white with cobalt blue hue is making a bluish gray. I'm not sure I will use the pink, but I will keep it on the palette just in case I think of a use later. I'm using the yellow ochre thinned with mineral spirits to get rid of the white background and painting the sides so a frame isn't necessary. This should be dry very soon. I'm just going to give it an hour. I used burnt umber with a little oil to do the branches. As I got into some of the background branches, I tried burnt umber with white, but the result was too bluish. I added burnt sienna to the mixture to warm it up again. This worked okay. I don't love how thick some of the branches look, but I can use the background snow to make them more narrow later. I added the berries, which is my two reds mixed and thinned with oil to help the color apply more smoothly.
While adding the berries, I noticed that I was missing some branches where the berries live and added these branches later. I'm trying to let some berries have more cadmium red than alizarin crimson and some less cadmium red than alizarin crimson for variety. Also, I like that some berries are mixing with the burnt umber and going darker. Variety is the key to making it look interesting. I used pure white titanium for the foreground snow. Having it touch the berries and branches was tricky because I didn't want the colors to blend. You might be able to notice that I wiped the brush a lot and painted toward the wet paint to try to keep the snow as bright as possible. The trick was to keep the paint thick on my brush as I applied it. background. As I went along, it would get contaminated with more of the burnt umber. I had to add white to keep it light enough. My goal was to leave a thin line showing around the foreground and let the grays touch the elements in the background for the effect of less separation.